Nice Dr. B here. Look at the picture I've drawn. This is the last time I visited the beach. I'm going to have a little chat about my little expedition down there. So here's this picture. I'm just going to pop this back over. When I was at the beach, I was sat on that dock of the bay like you saw in that picture. And I thought to myself, can I calculate the wave speed of that wave when I'm sat on that side of the bay? So the first thing I thought was, yeah, I can. I need to use this equation. So if you just have a look at my equation, I need to know the wave speed. I need to know the frequency and I need to know the wave length in order to calculate the wave speed. So let's go back over to the beach where I was sat on the side of a wall. So the first thing I need to know is, well, what direction is that wave moving? Well, it's moving towards the wall and it's crashing in there. So the direction of movement is this way, but it's oscillating or vibrating at right angles or perpendicular to that direction of motion. So what type of wave do you think that is? There's two types. Which one of those two types do you think it might be? So if you think back to that equation that I showed you, one of the things I need to do is calculate the frequency. So how do I calculate frequency? Well, I calculate it by counting the number of complete waves every second. So in this case, every second, these waves hitting the wall, there were one, two, three waves crashing into the wall. So every second, three waves hit that wall, so the frequency is three hertz. Pause the video now, guys. I've got some other calculations with regards to frequency that I want you to have a go at. So pause the video and have a go at those questions. So frequency, that's measured in hertz. Also, wavelength, which is one complete wave, is measured in meters. So in this case, the wavelength was one meter. I want you to use three hertz and one meter to calculate the wave speed which is measured in meters per second. Let's go over to the equation now and have a look at other things you might need to do in your exam and it's a rearranging your equation. So uh, they might ask you in the exam to calculate frequency. So what you do need to do to calculate frequency you need to divide wavelength on this side and you also need to divide it on the other side. What we do to one side we need to do to the other. So Wavelength pops over there, and now we've got frequency E equals wave speed divided by wavelength. Also in the exam, they might ask you to calculate wavelength. It's exactly the same thing. So what you do to calculate wavelength is you divide frequency from this side, so that vanishes, and whatever you do to one side, you do to the other. So frequency comes over here, and we've got wave speed divided by frequency, and that equals the wavelength of that wave in meters. The last task, this is like if you're super duper a real scientist and you want to have a go. I've got an experiment here where I drop a ball into a bucket or a bowl or whatever of water. I want you to come up with an experiment to calculate the wave speed of the wave which is created when I drop that ball into the bucket. Now, if you're struggling, if you look in the description below, there's some... Um, hints and tips on how to do the experiment. Things you're thinking about is the method and the equipment you need. If you're super, super duper, how about you film it and you come in and show me? Fantastic. Well, well done, guys. That's me talking about waves today. Have a go yourself.